In our further adventures, we will often encounter situations where we look at contour integrals which become infinitely big or infinitely small. So for example, if you have a situation where you have an integral here, which involves this circular segment CR, then you can ask yourself the question, what will happen in the limit of R going towards infinity? And one of the theorems that will help us to answer questions like these is so-called Jordan's lemma. So Jordan's lemma is about integrals of the following form, f of z exponential j beta exponential beta z dz over this circular segment CR. So again, Jordan's lemma only deals with this part here, CR. These straight sections, they're not included, so this is not a contour integral over here. So Jordan was wondering, when will it happen that in the limits of r going towards infinity, this integral here will also vanish? So that's, uh, that's the question. Now, it makes sense to ask that both of these factors will vanish. Uh, that's a sensible thing uh, to, to look into. So obviously, probably we'll need to demand that f of z will move towards zero in the limits of r going towards infinity. But we will also need to have the situation that this second factor here, this exponential, will also move towards zero in the limits of r going towards infinity. And that's not something which is true for all possible locations in the complex plane, as we can easily verify for ourselves. Um, let's have a look, for example, at the situation where we don't have exponential beta z in, in, in general, but look at a more specific case where we look at exponential, uh, let's say exponential j b z, where b is a positive number. The question is, can you show that this thing here will only vanish in the limits of z going towards infinity, provided that z is a point in the upper half plane? So a rather straightforward exercise pause and see if you can convince yourself that this thing only vanishes in the limits in the upper half plane. So what we should look at is exponential j b and then z of course is x plus j y. The only thing that matters for the amplitude will be of course the combination of jb and jy so this is going to become proportional to exponential j times j is minus one and then we have b and then we have y b was already a positive number so this thing only vanishes we will only have a decreasing exponential here if also y is a positive number so this thing clearly shows that a factor like this will only go towards zero in the limits of z going towards infinity if we're in the upper half plane where the imaginary part here is, uh, is positive. So that was just a specific case here, exponential j, b, z. The question is, how can we generalize this to an exponential beta z here? Now, it turns out that what we need to do is a bit more of a complicated construction. So we're not giving any proof here, so just uh, illustrating what this construction looks like. If we have our circular segment here, CR, the circle will have a point of origin, and let's call that point A. So how do we determine which location in the complex plane is valid in order for the exponential to vanish if we take R towards infinity? Well, what we should do is we should first calculate a complex number, namely A, plus the complex conjugate of beta. Then we should draw a line between a and the number we just calculated. Next step is draw a line perpendicular to that. And then that line will tell us that the correct half plane is the half plane on the opposite sides of the line from the point a plus beta complex conjugate. So as long as our contour is over here, and at least we will have the situation that this exponential will vanish in the limits of r going towards infinity. Again, without proof here, but just as a sanity check, pause the video and try to convince yourself that this complicated construction over here indeed reduces to the situation of the upper half plane for this specific case here, 
where we, where we were not looking at exponential beta z, but where we were looking at exponential j b z, uh, with b being a positive number, and where the origin of our circular segment, namely a, um, was at the point zero. So pause the video and apply this in this specific case to see if you can recover the upper half plane. Okay, let's do our construction. So we have the complex plane. We have A, the origin of our circular segment. And then we need to calculate A plus the complex conjugate of beta. So that's going to give us zero plus, uh, so remember beta was JB. So the complex conjugate is minus JB. And since b is a positive number, this is indeed a point that will end up somewhere on the negative imaginary axis over here. Next step, connect these two points. Draw a line perpendicular over here. And the correct half plane is lying on the opposite side of that line. And that is indeed the upper half plane, um, as we also verified from the, uh, the explicit example earlier. Okay, good. Now that this is all out of the way, we're finally able to formulate uh, Jordan's lemma and all the conditions that are attached to it. And again, we're going to give that without proof, but Jordan's lemma tells us that the limit of R going towards infinity of an integral of the form f of z exponential beta z dz over a certain circular segment CR, that this thing vanishes only if two conditions are fulfilled. First condition is that the limit of f of z at infinity should be zero. And the second condition is that our CR, our uh, circular line segment, is in the, um, what we'll call the correct half plane defined by that complicated construction over there. And again, both of these conditions refer to both of these factors here in the, uh, the integrand. So this is Jordan's lemma, which will help us later on when we're tackling more complicated contour integrals.